After judging Israel until he was 98 years old, Eli died along with his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, when the Ark of the Covenant was captured by the Philistines. The Lord's hand was very heavy against the Philistines, so they returned the Ark to Israel after it had spent seven months in Philistine territory. We know the Ark was returned in the beginning of the year because it was during wheat harvest. As we will demonstrate shortly, it was the beginning of this same year that Saul became king. After returning the Ark, the Philistines did not stay docile for very long. Samuel gathered the people at Mizpah, and when the Philistines saw this, they came back and attacked. The people cried out to Samuel, and the Lord saved them from the hand of the Philistines. The people rejoiced, but they were not confident in their current situation. The Philistines were a constant threat to Israel. Eli and his two sons had just died, and Samuel was old and only had a few more years to live. To make matters worse, Nahash, king of the Ammonites, was now marching towards Israel. The people were stricken with panic when they saw that Nahash intended to make war against them while the Philistines were still pressing on the other side of Israel. So they said to Samuel, You are old and your sons do not follow the Lord. Make us a king to rule over us and to lead us into battle. So Samuel again gathered the people at Mizpah, and Saul was selected to be their king. Saul was unwilling to take on this role, so he went and hid himself. The people were not impressed, and some scoffed, saying, Shall Saul reign over us? The reluctant Saul went home to Gibeah. But while he was out in his field, news came to him that Nahash, king of the Ammonites, had besieged Jabesh Gilead. Then the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard this news, and his anger was greatly aroused. So he took a yoke of oxen and cut them in pieces and sent them throughout all the territory of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whoever does not go out with Saul and Samuel to battle, so it shall be done to his oxen. Saul's grotesque call to action was meant to be a symbolic reminder of what happened back in Judges chapters 19 through 21 with the Levite and his concubine. That incident took place in the territory of Benjamin in the city of Gibeah, which is where Saul is right now in his hometown. Gibeah's horrific crime regarding the Levite's concubine and the Benjamites defending this sin led to the tribe of Benjamin being almost completely wiped out. Only 600 men remained after their punishment, and they would have gone extinct if not for the sparing of 400 young virgins from the camp of Jabesh Gilead that were given as wives to the Benjamites. If the Benjamite tribe would have been allowed to die out, King Saul, being a Benjamite, would have never been born. So now with Jabesh Gilead under threat of being wiped out, Saul came to their rescue and defeated the Ammonites. After this, Samuel gathered all the people to Gilgal to reaffirm Saul's kingship. King Saul's coronation was during wheat harvest, just shortly after the Philistines had returned the Ark of the Covenant to Israel. Then Saul gathered 3,000 men of Israel 2,000 were with Saul at Michmash and in the mountains of Bethel, and 1,000 were with Jonathan in Gibeah. Then Jonathan attacked a garrison of the Philistines. 
The Philistines retaliated by gathering a huge army with chariots and horsemen and encamped at Michmash. The Israelites were again stricken with panic and ran to hide in caves, holes, rocks, tombs, and cisterns. Some even fled to the land of Gad and Gilead across the Jordan. The Israelites that did not flee were trembling with fear, and Saul gathered them together at Gilgal, about 600 men. Saul waited seven days, as Samuel had instructed, but Samuel didn't come to Gilgal to offer the burnt offerings and sacrifices of peace offerings like he said he would. Fearing that the Philistines would come from Michmash to Gilgal and attack, the few remaining people began to scatter. That's when Saul took it upon himself to offer the burnt offering, and just as he did, Samuel arrived. Samuel asked Saul, What have you done? You have done foolishly by not keeping the commandment of the Lord. Samuel told Saul that he would be replaced as king because of his disobedience, and they all returned to Gibeah. The Philistine army was still gathered at Michmash, but Jonathan snuck off with his armor bearer and attacked a Philistine garrison, killing about 20 men. The earth quaked and the Lord sent a panic over the Philistines, scattering them in such confusion that they were even attacking themselves. All the Israelites that were hiding saw the Philistines retreating, so they came out of hiding and rallied together, striking them down, and the Lord gave Israel victory. Later, Samuel sent Saul to strike down King Agag and the Amalekites and instructed him not to take any of the plunder. Saul's disobedience in this matter led God to send Samuel to the house of Jesse and anoint young David as king. David found himself in service to King Saul, and the Philistines again gathered their armies together to battle Israel at Soko in Judah. David's three oldest brothers went with Saul to the battle. The young David brought food to the military camp where his brothers were stationed, and that's when David defeated the Philistine giant Goliath. As we can see from our chart, if Goliath was defeated during Saul's first year of being king, David would have been 18 years old when he killed the giant, and 19 if it were the next year. We know this because of the chronology given in the Bible regarding the Ark of the Covenant. When the Philistines returned the Ark, it went to the house of Abinadab. Later, when David was king, and he moved his throne from Hebron to Jerusalem, he also intended to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. He brought the Ark out of the house of Abinadab, where we are told specifically that the Ark spent 20 years. We're also told that David reigned 33 years in Jerusalem and 7 years 6 months in Hebron. So now we can go back 7.5 years to see which year David began his reign. Then we're told that David was 30 years old when he became king. With each row of our spreadsheet representing a year, we can now know David's age at any point on our timeline. So that's how we can know that he was either 18 or 19 years old when he killed Goliath. So Saul died in battle after reigning a little over 12 years. It's interesting to note that it was the people of Jabesh Gilead that came and got the bodies of King Saul and his sons to give them a proper burial. We also see that Jonathan's son Mephibosheth was five years old at that time. So after the death of Saul, David became king over Judah and he reigned in Hebron. Saul's son Ishbosheth became king over Israel and he reigned from Mahanaim. Ishbosheth was killed after only two years, and the elders of Israel came to David at Hebron 
to make him king over all Israel. Notice that David beginning to reign over both Judah and Israel after the death of Ishbosheth does not coincide with him moving his throne to Jerusalem. These are two separate events that happened several years apart, but they are often mistakenly thought to have happened at the same time. During David's reign in Jerusalem, we have several more events that are not anchored to the timeline, but we can get a general idea of where they fit. First, Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah when he began to eat at David's table. Since we know Mephibosheth's age on our timeline now, we can place him approximately here. Then Joab was fighting the Ammonites after they humiliated David's men as they went to console Hanun after the death of his father, Nahash, king of the Ammonites. This is when David stayed behind and sinned with Bathsheba. We also have a 12-year block of time that fits generally in this area of the timeline, and it begins with David's son Amnon raping his half-sister Tamar, and ends with David's other son Absalom's failed attempt to take his father David's throne. Then we see David's 40-year reign completed, and then the first, second, and third years of Solomon, and then the fourth year of Solomon, which is the main anchor point on the timeline the 480th year after the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt. The scriptures are very specific and repetitive regarding the second year after they came out of Egypt and the 40th year after they came out of Egypt with multiple ways of verifying the year being spoken of in both cases. With each row of our spreadsheet representing a year, it's simple to count to the 480th year after they left Egypt. This allows us to confirm that the chronology of the judges have been correctly configured in our timeline spreadsheet and that the complete reigns of both King Saul and King David have also been displayed on our timeline correctly.